Well, it's my great pleasure now to welcome Fiona Endicott, who's the CEO of Connecting Foster and Kinship Carers uh, here in South Australia. My name's Julie McCrossan, and we're broadcasting to you today on the land of the Ghana people. And this is all part of a forum in May 2022 that's about identifying priorities for action to improve child protection and family well-being uh, here in South Australia. So welcome, Fiona. Look, the biggest thing I, I want to do in our brief time together is to talk about this South Australian statement of commitment with foster and kinship carers signed in 2020 uh, by Child and Family Focus SA, the host of the forum, the Department for child protection and indeed your, your own organisation. And we'll get into some of the nitty gritty of, of what, you know, this statement of commitment means in practice uh, to foster carers and kinship carers. But before we get into the nitty gritty of it, let's talk about culture because the spirit of this, and I'll just read the key words and our media man will put them on the screen, that foster carers and, and kinship carers are informed, supported, consulted, valued, respected. I understand you believe that some non-government organisations are already bringing the full spirit of this into all the work they do with foster and kinship carers and the young people they're caring for, and there are others who are absolutely AWOL. So is culture in the non-government organisations the real thing we've got to improve? Most certainly, Julie, I believe that this particular document is a fantastic bedrock for the child protection sector moving forward, particularly over the next four years, if this is the time frame that we're talking to. Um, the importance of having a strong consultative foundation, organisational culture is crucial, I think, across the sector as a whole for agencies to embed it in their organisational practice, policy, procedure and process. And that can't help but move forward into their engagement with carers. Yeah, you, know, uh, you want action, not policy words. I think I understand that. And I think a lot of people at this forum do. But the really big challenge, as I understand it from your point of view, is the need for stability in the professional staff. Because for a culture of trust to develop, whether any sort of relationship, it takes time to develop mutual trust and it's my understanding that you think the constant turnover of professional staff is not just bad for the children and the young people, it's, it's bad for the carers. Why is the instability so damaging? I suppose it's the rotating, revolving door, I suppose you could say, of workers coming in and out of the young person's life and also the carer's life. It's very difficult to create long-standing trusting relationships with your agency worker if, if they're constantly turning over. So I think that's really crucial what you've, what you've said. Um, let's turn to what the the statement of commitment would look like in practice. I'll just repeat those words. Uh, the carers are informed, supported, consulted, valued and respected. You say one way we'd know that was happening is if um, carers, whether kinship or foster, were invited to care team meetings and NDIS planning meetings and were actively invited to contribute their views. Is that happening now at all? Like just... How much engagement, authentic engagement with the carers is happening right now, do you think? We would, we would say that there's an uptick in it occurring, Julie, but it's nowhere near at the point that it needs to be for carers to feel truly respected as part of the care team for their young person. So that is certainly something we would like, if you were to, to see a benchmark of, of things that we were being achieved, it's yes, carers being engaged in care team meetings, actually asking carers, can you attend a meeting before scheduling it? and consulting with them about what their young person actually needs. Do, they, do uh, carers, do you know, ever get minutes of the meeting shared with them, you know, some record of what was said, you know, how that happens in the professional world? That varies, depending on the agency that you work with. Um, most, yes, that is an area that needs to improve as well. Um, another issue you've raised is that carers need to be regularly offered help, support, training, and for there to be a culture where options are being offered and where it's seen as helping each other to do better for the children, not judging the carer. Now, again, that's a very subtle nuance. Uh, speak to what your dream is of what should be happening in terms of that 
training and, and mentoring of carers? Our dream from the perspective of the peak body for carers is just asking carers, what would you like in the way of training and support and education and proactively filling that need and also reducing or removing any stigma that might, that might come with asking for training? Um, and we find that there's um, carers asking for trauma-informed support training and how to manage um, difficult behaviours, those types of things in order to better support their young person. Proactively implementing them would be just perfection. And what do you hear from carers that worries you that they may hesitate to ask for help with certain behaviours from troubled children? What are you hearing that you think needs to be sorted out? It's a great question. So what we're hearing is carers are fearful that if they do ask for support, that it may be seen that they're not coping or can't care for their young person. And the ultimate concern is that they might have their young person removed from their care. So that's quite concerning for us. If one thing that struck me uh, preparing for this forum, Fiona, is that the young people I've spoken to really want stability in the professional caseworker, support worker, but they also want very regular visits where that caseworker, support worker comes into wherever they're living, whether it be a foster care, a home, a kinship home, residential care. Now, my understanding is that some foster parents may find the visiting actually anxiety-inducing, am I being judged, uh, you know, that there's a little bit of a tension there. What do we need to sort out there and talk about in terms of uh, support workers coming into the homes of carers? Well, I suppose I could draw um, our, our discussion to where we know it's being done really, really well. So where um, support agency workers are really building that positive rapport, taking the time to get to know their carers and trust their carers' parenting role and skill. Um, and not just... Um, forcing themselves into the relationship of the carer and the child, but taking the time, as you would with a normal relationship, understanding that there are checks and balances that need to be met, but actually taking the time to build an authentic relationship with the carer. Um, and it sort of ties into what we mentioned earlier about the turnover in the workforce. It's very tricky to do that when carers, are, uh, workers are go coming and going out of the sector. Yes, our time's up now, but I know members of your organisation will be attending the forum uh, early in May 2022 in, in Adelaide. And I guess my final comment is when I went on to your excellent website, um, the, this South Australian statement of commitment with foster and kinship carers, there's a video in which we see you talking, we see Rob Martin uh, from uh, CAFSA speaking and, and the then minister, I'm assuming, uh, at the time that the thing was signed. Do you want people to go onto your website and learn more about this if they aren't aware of it? Is that the yes, take home? Yes, please, Julie. Thank you for that beautiful segue. And we have many copies that we can send out to agencies and to carers directly if they would like a physical copy. Fantastic. Well, look, Fiona Endicott, CEO of Connecting Foster and Kinship Carers in South Australia, deaf sign clapping. Thank you so much for coming because you weren't able to come to the forum because you're giving out awards with the minister here in South Australia to your carers. So I hope you have a wonderful day and thank you for coming to us via video. Thank you so much, Julie.